<clears throat> What's up? Is- Hey, Barry Bonds, off, welcome bro. to the A&R Report. You Let me might turn. Feel if you're like, oh, nah, Come on, I Act. Do all that. Like, Let me really shut Act off. Act's talking all this. Act, you're thinking way too into this shit, man. Seriously. You know, this situation with Diddy, and yes, I'm giving another take on this Diddy situation because it's the hot topic right now that everybody's talking about, but everybody's overthinking it. Everybody's overthinking this shit, man. It's not as complex as you think it may be. It's not. Now, let's get into the mind of a music executive, a billionaire music executive mogul who has for a long time been a womanizer who's, you know, gone through, but he's single. So you can't really like charge him on that because he is single. He has not married anyone. No one. He hasn't even given the implication that, you know, he wanted to marry anyone except for Kim. So let's think about this. When you were a music executive, and I was, I even worked for Diddy. I worked for Diddy for four years. And it's like being in those in those rooms, being in, 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 the, in around the circles and whatnot, man. It's like I've seen people do whatever just to get a glimpse, just to get in the same room. All right. Here's a story. I used to drive for Harv. Harv was my boss. Harv was the, uh, the, the president of Bad Boy, and uh, he was the head of A&R. So I worked for hard and I also worked for Rich Dollars as well. All right. But look, there were times that I was driving hard around the city. That's what I had to do. I would drive him around. And uh, I remember one time we stopped and we went to the hit factory one time. He had to go in there and do something with, uh, I believe it was, ooh, I believe it was making a band or Danity Kane. It was one of them. All right. So we had to go in there. Well, he had to go in there. I stayed outside. I parked right in front of the hip factory. And while I was there, I'm in his car. I'm chilling. He had a BMW 745 at the time. They just came out. You know what I'm saying? I hardly knew how to drive that motherfucker, man. Straight up. I hardly knew how to drive it. So, you know, I'm driving his joint and whatnot. And uh, I'm stopped right in front of the uh, the hip factory. And uh, we just chilling. I'm chilling. I'm listening to uh, to Ness's stuff that hadn't even come out yet. It was in the deck, and a guy rolled up on me, and he was like, "Yo, yo, uh, is this Harv's car?" And I looked at him strangely, like, "Like, yeah, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Why?" And he was like, "Yo, yo, I don't mean no harm, Paul. I just need you to do me a favor, man. I will give you seventy-five dollars." I remember it like it was yesterday. $75 if you take this CD and you just put it in the deck and you play it while you're driving him around. $75, please just put this deck, this CD in the deck and just play it. That's it. Now, this is like 2004, 2005, something like that. And um, I had just started working for them like that. The man gave me $75 just to put a CD in a deck. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, people will do whatever to get close to these guys. Whatever. I mean, I got stories about women, you know what I'm saying, that I've seen slut themselves out. You know, a group of chicks from Cleveland that came up and they was trying to get up into, uh, 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 what was that? Where were we at? We were at some club. And we were doing promotions at some club. I want to say it's Taj, but then again, I don't know. I forget. But a club in New York. And we were just hanging out. And I've seen chicks flash their titties just to get in the VIP section with these guys. I've seen chicks go up in there and let... And I'm going to keep it... I'm going to remain nameless. Keep, yeah, I'm not going to say any names, but... Let these guys who work for Bad Boy just rub all over them. I mean, just let them just, I mean, they were just getting fondled. Just getting fondled, man. You know what I'm saying? Just letting them rub all of them. Hey, man had his hand all up her dress, probably was fingering her. Right here in VIP section. I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it done. I've seen it happen. Howard Homecoming. I've seen chicks down there let dudes beat, beat, beat all night. You know what I'm saying? Just to be around the entourage. 
I've seen it. It happens. When you're that desperate just to get around and these chicks were desperate. I've seen it. Super Bowl. Super Bowl down in Atlanta. Super Bowl down in, uh, what was we at? Houston. I've seen it. They was down there in Houston and one night. Chicks was trying to get around uh, Jamie Foxx. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, they was talking spicy. Jamie, I'll suck your dick. Jamie, I'll lick your ass. Jamie, I'll do this. Just to get around Jamie Foxx. These chicks will do whatever it takes. They're called groupies. Or did you guys forget that that even exists? Yes, groupies. Groupies that want to get around these very powerful music executives because they feel that if they get in there and they do what they got to do, whatever it is that they need to do, all right, that they that their living situation and their whole future will be a little brighter because these guys will take a liking to them and shower them with gifts and trips and do all this. There is a groupie culture in hip hop. Yes, there is. And Cassie is no different. No different. Mind you, you guys seem to forget that she was dating fucking Ryan Leslie when they first started out. You know what I'm saying? People will do anything to get on. The R. Kelly situation. You had chicks doing whatever to try to get at R. Kelly. I mean, Sparkle even offered up her niece to be to get her in with R. Kelly. She knew. Like, why are you guys acting so bewildered over this situation when it is what it is? It's called greed. Greed. When you will pretty much do whatever it takes to get in a situation that may turn around and improve your living situation, your lifestyle, people get greedy. Cassie is nothing but a tale of her greed. That's what happened. Her greed got the best of her and she allowed Diddy to do whatever he wanted to do. Now, let's put this in a more realistic aspect of it is that when you're a powerful music exec like that, now put your shoe, put yourself in Diddy's shoes. You got women throwing themselves at you. The baddest, the baddest of baddest chicks in America, in the world for that matter, will want to do anything to get close to you. That power will go to your head. That power will go to your head. I got another story. When I was in college, the bad boy uh, um, tour, well, it really wasn't the bad boy tour, but Puff and them, they were all on that on that tour. And 112 had just came out. Just came out. People didn't even know what they looked like yet, really. They just saw them on videos. So me and a couple of my homeboys, we were at the concert. We were in college, right? We worked for the radio station, so they gave us free tickets. We helped with the promotion, and, uh, you know, we got backstage and all of that. So I told my fellas, I said, yo, we gonna go to the concert dressed, suited and booted. And I mean, we were suited and booted. You know what I'm saying? Suits on, derby hats, all of that. We looked the part. We're backstage. And while we're backstage, we're looking up into the stands and the rafts and we see a group of badass chicks. And then there was some badass chicks that was behind stage as well. So me and my guys, there's four of us, me and my guys, I was like, yo, let's see if we can get them. So we was like, yo, we told these chicks we was 112. They said, who are y'all? Y'all group, y'all group, who are y'all? Yeah, we 112. Yo, these chicks bit it hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. Yo, we went back to the hotel, even one of these chicks' mamas, was with them, was taking pictures with them. They rubbing all on us. I'm rubbing on asses. My homeboy rubbing on asses. We got their number. And uh, they was like, yo, what are y'all doing after the show? I said, yo, we doing y'all. We with y'all. They had a hotel room. We went back to their hotel room. Yes, it happens because they 
wanted to do whatever it took to get with whoever they thought was on, whoever they thought was the superstar or the celebrity. Now, mind you, 112 had just came out. The only song they had out was Only You. They didn't know what the hell they looked like. So when they looked at us, they was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's 112. <laughs> so we, we did our thing and whatnot off the strength of us perping like we was 112. It happens. It happens. It's called greed. That's what it is. When your greed, your just obsession with celebrities, celebrity lifestyle, and wanting to be a part of it, or wanting to be on the in crowd, overtakes your logic and your reasoning, you'll do whatever it takes to get in there and to be a part of this situation. Whatever it takes. And it's sad, but it is what it is. It is what it is, man. And you guys out here trying to speculate on what this and that and oh Cassie's a she's a she's a victim and this that no Cassie had every every single chance every chance imaginable to say no I'm not with that no I'm not doing that no it's a wrap no no means no every single opportunity but she could not divorce herself from that greed of her being able to profit or being able to take advantage of that lifestyle that Diddy was uh, affording her. And when that happens, hey, anything can happen, pretty much. You know, he probably could have took a donkey in there to hit her from the back. And she probably would have said, yeah, because it was her greed powering that emotion, powering, you know, her reasoning to do all of these crazy things. Now, look, we still don't know what really, really happened. Because I keep telling you guys, there's a difference between perception and reality. And when that happens, you don't know what really was the case in this situation. All right? So everybody's speculating. Everybody's already chopped him up. And no, I'm not apologist for Diddy by no means. I'm not an apologist for him. I'm not caping for him. But I just know how this shit goes down in the music industry. Now, I'll take you back. Another example. There was a video called uh, Backstage that Jay-Z did about the Hard Knock Life Tour. And in that video, or in that, in that documentary, his uh, roadies had a group of white female groupies, or no, yeah, white female groupies and black uh, female groupies that... I believe the, the the black one, she went into the uh, bathroom with one of his roadies. And he said, yeah, yeah, come on, I'm going to give y'all some real backstage footage on how it really goes down backstage. The chick took him into a stall in a bathroom and topped him off. One of the chicks was showing their titties and everything, just pulled her top down. They're called groupies, okay? Cassie is no different. In this situation, the chick took him in there, topped him off, cameras rolling. So come on, man. Everybody's acting like, oh my God, this is just so horrible. This is just so, oh my God, I just don't understand how this even happened. How did da 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 Yo, it is what it is. So all of you, all of the, all right now, all of the blogs, are like piling on, giving their takes on this. I even saw Slim Thug give his take on this, which a very, which was a, which pretty much complements what I'm saying. It was a very realistic take that says, "Look, these type of things happen. It should be a limit. It should be a time limit, you know, on people reporting any type of, you know, incidents or sexual assaults or anything like that. It definitely should be. It definitely should be." Because trust, buyer's remorse on these type of situations is real. You think about some shit that you did and you feel embarrassed about it later and you're thinking about it and it's on you because it was really outside of the normal scope of how you would act or how you would conduct yourself and just thinking about somebody getting over on you in that situation. But then you forget about your greed. You forget about why you did it. You forget about what made you, what motivated you to allow somebody to slut you out. 
it's your greed because you are trying to improve your lifestyle or trying to get to the bag whatever whatever it is it's all associated with greed it really is now I've given you like four different instances on and experiences that I've had and that I've seen on how this whole thing goes down so I hope that you guys are able to be able to listen to this and understand that these type of things happen in the music industry it is an industry that everyone is trying to get into it is an industry that people will damn near sell their kids to get into there's a lot of parents out here who have children who have young children you know who will offer them up for whatever to get them into the music industry for them to be successful it's called greed man it's called greed that's all it's called and until you all are able to control that motivation of greed then these type of things are going to continue to happen because uh abs what they say uh, uh absolute power corrupts absolutely you know what i'm saying when you are a young person and you got a whole bunch of power to do certain things and make people do certain things you know unimaginable things yeah you're gonna use that shit. that's definitely going to happen you're going to use it you aren't going to be thinking on all cylinders your brain isn't going to be clicking on all cylinders you're going to use that you're going to say hey you know might as well they wanted to do it and at the end of the day they could be wrong with the sentiment of you know having you do whatever it is whatever ungodly you know act but at the end of the day it's your responsibility you need to take accountability for you actually agreeing to do it and there is none and as a society we keep allowing and i hate to say this man because i know you're gonna call me you know woman hater and all this shit but as a society we gotta quit allowing women to just make these dumb mistakes wholeheartedly make these dumb mistakes and then that giving them bail to get out of it and a payday it's not cool it's not right it isn't women have every 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 advantage every chance to say no i don't want to do that and people will listen if i was to go out here right now and if i was to grab a chick on her butt and she says, hey, he grabbed my butt. No, I didn't want that. No, he, he groped me. He sexually assaulted me. I will be under the jail in two minutes. Or I'll probably be getting my ass kicked up and down the street by some dudes or whoever, you know, trying to take up for, for that woman. <clears throat> so I'm not buying it. I'm not buying this whole thing of, well, uh, I'm able to heal now, so I wanted to talk about all the craziness. No, I'm not buying that shit. Because you didn't think about that when you were living it up in Miami, in L.A., wherever you guys were flying to, San Tropez, uh, uh, whatever beautiful scenery, Dubai, whatever. And speaking of Dubai, I'm surprised that there hasn't been any of the other of the, of the get-to-the-bag bad bitch chicks that's out here doing all kind of crazy shit like letting these Arabian dudes shit on them. Letting them shit on them. Now you're talking about some nasty shit. <clears throat> There's a culture out here of women that are flying over to Dubai, getting the bag put on them, and these dudes are doing the most ungodly things. Shitting on them, pissing on them, spitting on them, whatever. Probably having animals smash them. But we're not seeing those exposures in the social media. We're not seeing any of those chicks come up, come out and say, hey, the Sheik of, uh, of Dubai uh, paid me such and such and such and such money to come out and uh, he shit in my mouth. We're not seeing that. We're only seeing these young black executives, these young black rich guys being exposed. And that shit, it just don't sit well with me. It really doesn't. You know, because it's really... Uh, it's 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 nothing but just the greed, the conniving spirit of those who are trying to take advantage of the situation. You want to enjoy the good times, enjoy the, the champagne, caviar, and, and lifestyle while it's going, and then when it's over or you have no more access to it, now it's oh well. Let me go ahead and expose you. Let me go ahead and tell everybody that you called me a bitch and you did this to me back five to ten years ago. Nah, man. Nah. 
and you guys know that what I'm saying right now is 100% facts 1000% facts this whole thing is a money grab and to be honest I don't expect the sisterhood to really speak out on it like that because they're the ones who is uh, 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 taking advantage and profiting from this situation I see a lot of women in social media talking about some yeah girl get the bag get the bag yep did he did that yep he did it he did it up remember this is America okay in America you are innocent until proven guilty now I will say this again I'm not caping for the man at all but I do understand the lifestyle and I do understand what goes on in the lifestyle and I've seen this too many times too many times and the sad part about it is that we as a society we're always giving bail and bailing these chicks out who do the most ignorant stupid just ungodly things for the bag for the bag no shame placed on them not even a questioning no one that was even there to be able to question now I understand why he paid the money because it's like yo what else is gonna pop out what else you know let's go ahead and clear this up knock this out get this little chick the money that she's asking for because we don't want it to be a situation where now there's about 20 other chicks that's lined up trying to do the same thing, trying to get the same money grab. It's sad. It really is sad. And what's even sadder is that as a people, as a society, we are promoting and we are allowing this to happen. Men, I tell you, you need to really, really evaluate the women and the people around you. Not only the women, but the people around you. If you got money, if you got millions, you need to evaluate the people around you. Okay? Because if not, it's going to come back to bite you. You're only going to be as successful as how you treat or how your relationship with women is. Shout out to Minister Jack on that. You're only that's all that's the measure of how successful you're gonna be and it's sad man it's really sad that we are in a day right now that these type of things are allowed because maybe 30 40 years ago this shit wouldn't be allowed at all they wouldn't even get us a second look they'd be like whatever you you chose to do it you chose to do it how you gonna sit here and maybe five six seven years later and whatnot come out against this man about situations that happen and you was a willing participant a willing participant it doesn't make sense it doesn't and you guys know it don't and that's why i'm surprised when i'm clicking on youtube and i'm hearing all of these takes and it's just devoid of any accountability accountability is the key word here accountability when you're accountable, you're going to be accountable for everything that happens to you. You're going to be accountable to everything that happens to you. You're going to say, hey, this happened to me, but I let it happen. That is the sign of an uh, uh, emotionally intelligent adult. This shit don't make sense. It really don't. And as long as this is allowable in today's society, then trust me, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's gonna, it's gonna, right now, the millionaires are getting it. It's only a matter of time before everyday Joe Schmoes are finding themselves being extorted by ex girlfriends, ex jump off side chicks, and all of that. Because you got the, you got Sexy Red and all these other ones talking about, they, and Sukiyana talking about they wanna eat a nigga ass. So once they do that, and then five ten years later they look back on that and say oh that was disgusting why did i ever even do something like that and then they're gonna turn into victims oh well he made me do it he made me do it nah nobody put a gun in your head said drop your drawers and you know do this nobody put a gun in your head to say put your tongue in the crack of my head nobody did that I'm just, I'm just, seriously, right now, I'm just really bewildered. This whole thing is just shocking that it's even allowed, that it's even going down. This whole thing is just, it's nuts, man. It really is. But I just want to give a quick take on this. 
because I was just, you know, reviewing some of the takes on this whole Diddy situ Cassie situation. And uh, I don't really think that these guys are really, I think these guys are just placating and just, you know, just, I don't know. I don't know if they want to get canceled. I don't know. I don't know. Now, mind you, seems like the only people there to get canceled these days are men. No one else is getting canceled but men. Okay? Keep that in mind as well. I had a homeboy send me a, a text saying, oh, man, I saw your video, and it seems like you just going so hard to be against the grain and get canceled. Yo, I have no fear of fucking getting canceled. Fuck that shit. I'm not worried about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Cancel culture is, is, is the most wackiest bullshit that I've ever even heard of. You know, it's, it's high school. It's nothing but high school is. Don't sit by them because they think this way or they said this. Don't sit by, don't be their friend. It's dumb. It's really dumb, man. It makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. But that's my take on it. I just wanted to share it with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Please like, share, and subscribe to the realist channel that is talking about music, politics, sports, bullshit, trending topics. All right, get with me. Like, share, and subscribe. Holler at you guys later. Peace.